The table here shows the age standardized hospital admission rates for the decade between 91 and 92 and 2001. So it's quite clear there were more males than females, but not by a very wide margin. Come in. Oh, good. Michael Spence, Sunil Barty. Mr. Meet... Hardy, it's a pleasure to meet you. I'm Michael Spence, MBBS, FRCS, PLAS. Welcome to Holby. Yes, this isn't Mr. Hardy, actually. As I was about to explain, he's been taken ill, unfortunately. This is Mr. Angus Farrell, Mr. Hardy's manager, and indeed the most senior advisor to Sir Fraser Anderson at the SHA. Sunil Barty, I won't bore you with my many qualifications. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is tough on Hardy, but his loss is your gain. Presumably, you'd have me put this down to nerves. <laughs> I'd be extremely grateful if you would. <laughs> so I was explaining to Mr. Farrell that everyone here at Holby is fully behind the proposed plastics unit on Darwin. Absolutely. Yes. And that we'll ensure he sees whatever it is he needs to see in order to decide whether or not to award us funding to build a full business case. So once I've finished talking Mr. Farrell through Holby's wider future planning, he would like to review existing resources, interview stakeholders, interrogate data, and watch the two of you in surgery. The more challenging, the better. What's on today's list? Actually, we have a double prophylactic mastectomy and full reconstruction, which we're about to start, which I think would be the perfect procedure for you to see. That's right. This is a girl who lost both her mother and grandmother to breast cancer. The BRCA1 mutation presented on the screening, and although there's no guarantee it would develop into cancer, she has opted to have the risk removed. It is worth pointing out that without us taking care of her, immediate reconstruction would not be an option. Save the sales pitch for the brochure. She sounds ideal. So, gentlemen, would you like to carry on? Sure. Anything you need, Angus. Anything at all. Only my mother, my ex-wife, and Sir Fraser call me Angus. Are you any of those people? Yeah, no. No. So let's stick to Mr. Farrell, shall we? That might also stop Mr. Spence getting confused about who it is he's addressing. Oh, Mr. Spence doesn't stay confused for long. In fact, he's totally focused now, aren't you, Michael? Oh, yeah. Give us a moment, please. What's happening, Mr. Spence? I'm demonstrating that plastics can work alongside CT. And failing, it seems. Let's hope it's the only time you do so today, for all our sakes. Extubate the girl, please, and send her home. Uh, I promised Farrell he would see this procedure. Well, you shouldn't have. She is my star patient. And your first responsibility was to her. You're surely not suggesting we put her under for a second time today, are you? What am I supposed to tell Farrell? It's Mr. Farrell. She can't be the only patient on the list. Just one of those things. We'll find another procedure. One of those things. I've never really understood what that means. Well, it means... It means that... nothing in the final analysis. As I'm sure the patient in the anaesthetic room who, and I quote, will never know the difference, would agree. Two notes of caution, gentlemen. Cooperation is generally more effective when both sides are party to it. And more than that, Sir Fraser has very little time for people who fail to deliver on their promises. What have you done? What had to be done? You're full of surprises, aren't you? What? Now, I assume Mr. Bart has brought you up to speed. Our helicopter crash victim has taken a nosedive, as it were, so he'll now be our four o'clock this slot, with Miss Naylor taking care of the cardiac tamponade and lung repair. While you sort out the chest wall, then I have a go at the face. Thereby allowing Mr. Farrell to witness both Darwin disciplines operating side by side. Well, you've got it all worked out. I think it's the ideal solution for everybody. Except Rose. Whom I thought I told you to send home some hours ago. It's one chance, gentlemen. There are uh, two operating theatres, anaesthetic room, and scrub room. Mr. Spence, I thought we were in Theatre One. Uh, yes, we are, and Theatre Two. What's that, sir? Yes, Paul Dunbar in Theatre One, Rose Stanley in Theatre Two. Really? Well, Mr. Farrell wanted to see us being challenged, and we were keen to demonstrate that under your leadership, Mr. Hansen, the patient always comes first. And I did make a promise to Rose. So, while Ms. Naylor is fixing Mr. Dunbar's heart, we remove the skin from Rose's back, push the latissimus dorsi muscles through, suture her, and then turn her over. That gives us 40 minutes to switch theaters, reconstruct our guy's chest wall, do what we can with his face, while Ms. Naylor deals with his lungs. And it's back to Rose to take care of the prosthesis. You've got it all worked out. Sounds ambitious. And risky. Suturing complete. Wow. Nice. Fish. Yes. 
Is that a smile I saw just then, Mr. Farrell? You wouldn't have thought so, would you? I won't keep you long, but I think a short debrief will be useful before I meet Sir Fraser tomorrow. Yes, of course. Headlines? Well, I have to confess that when Mr. Spence suggested that Darwin could handle twice as many procedures as it currently does, I didn't necessarily think he meant at the same time. <laughs> but in all seriousness, gentlemen, I don't say this very often, or indeed very easily, but I'm genuinely impressed. Good. Thank you. When, uh... Thinking in terms of the plans go, it wouldn't make sense. No, no, I suppose it would be a business in case. 